Hi folks, Chris White here, VP of Product Marketing with CAS Software. Thanks so much for tuning in to this short video. Today we're going to be talking about IT modernization and how software intelligence supercharges and empowers IT modernization projects. Specifically today, we're going to talk about mainframe applications. So let's jump right in. Presumably, if you've joined today, the answer to this question is yes. In fact, you do have mainframe software in your organization, or maybe with some of the clients that you work. What are some of the characteristics, more than likely, of that software? Well, from our experience, mainframe software typically has become core to the business. Given the very nature of, of mainframe software, its processing ability, the, the fact that it tends to be very old legacy code and, and, and software applications, in many, many cases, they have these, these software applications, these mainframe applications, have become the business over time. As a result, they carry with them exceedingly high risk. If they fail, in many cases, the business fails. And this is true particularly with, within financial organizations, in the financial industry, in insurance, in government. In addition to that, what are some of the other challenges and risks associated with mainframe software, mainframe applications? Well, first and foremost, just the cost, the cost of, of the machinery, the machines running the hardware, the, the energy costs for the cooling systems to keep these data centers and, and these machines cool. Skill sets are becoming harder and harder to find and, and also costly to either recruit or or bring in as, as consultants. And these mainframe applications tend to be less agile. They tend to be large applications that are difficult to modify and, and are difficult to adapt to changing business needs. At the end of the day, modernization of mainframe applications in particular is expensive and risky. What are the top three questions that we hear out in the field when we're talking to folks about application modernization and, and IT modernization around mainframes? Well, first and foremost, they just ask, how do we break up this monster? How do we carve this into manageable chunks, if you will, that we can actually put a project plan around and report to the board? How do we plan the work if, if we can figure out how to, to break up the monster, so to speak? How do we plan the work in a way that's most effective and most conducive to success? And once we do plan the work, how do we get everyone to comply with the target architecture? In many cases, we see numerous teams, development teams and delivery teams spun up working in parallel. They, they put in place a set of architecture guidelines and rules and that, that define the target architecture, but they struggle to keep everyone in sync and, and keep everyone in compliance. So here at CAST, we believe that the answer is built into a concept that we call software intelligence. And simply put, software intelligence is insight into complex software structure. The, the things that make up software intelligence are software health, the robustness, the efficiency, the security of a given application, the, the software size, the functional size, the technical size, and insight into the software flaws, potential outages or, or potential security breaches, data corruption, etc. Also, the software blueprint, so that visual map that shows the components and the interdependencies and then part of software intelligence is also benchmarks and seeing analytics around these other components in the context of industry or by geography, et cetera. At the end of the day, we believe modernization, effective modernization requires software intelligence and specifically across the entire stack. We want to be able to see from top to bottom. At the end of the day, most mainframe applications no longer are green screen applications. They typically now live in a very complex ecosystem of business logic, user interface, API. They typically are accessed by cloud applications, mobile applications, etc. So we need to be able to see top to bottom across that, across that stack. 
So let's talk for just a moment about a typical mainframe or modernization life cycle, the IT modernization journey, if you will. Typically, it starts out with some sort of application portfolio assessment. So we can identify, well, where are either the most critical applications or the, the best candidates for modernization for technical reasons or for business reasons? Once we've identified maybe a, a collection or a subset of applications that have some uh, like features or common use in the field, we need to be able to do some as-is architecture and, and actually discover what we have. We want to be able to do some to-be architecture and design the target state. And then the real work happens, the engineering and the implementation and the testing. And, and this becomes a very iterative process where we need to kind of manage the project and, and some of the portfolio and, and, and see trends as we're kind of implementing maybe some of these sprints. And, and ultimately, this needs to be able to feed back into the portfolio to, to kind of update and inform the portfolio. So let's take a look at each one of these a little bit deeper to see how does software intelligence and, and this newfound insight that software intelligence provides um, enables each one of these phases. So to begin with, from a portfolio assessment, again, we want to be able to look across the application portfolio and we want to be able to do so quickly in terms of the, the business impact of, of applications, maybe the software resiliency, and we need to be able to identify those candidate applications for modernization and make decisions based on fact, whether that's software risk, business value, business impact, et cetera. And with software intelligence, we wanna literally ingest that, that source code and kind of assess the business impact from information from the, the field, if you will, and identify those applications that are either candidates to be retired because they have very little to no business value and or poor technical capabilities, maybe those that should be rehosted because they do have business value, but maybe they're expensive to maintain, maybe some that need to be either renewed or enhanced because they, they're still high business value, but maybe there are some technical efficiencies that, that need to be built in or, 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 or added. And then some that simply just need to be replaced or, or rewritten because there still exists a business need, but that technology is, is insufficient. So with software intelligence, we can quickly assess the portfolio and make those determinations. And then once we do, we can begin to spin off some projects and, and we want to start by taking a baseline of the state of those applications. So in this example, we see a, a dashboard of, of 10 applications, and we can very quickly see kind of the current state from a perspective of robustness or efficiency or security, maybe the, the technical size and the functional size. This gives us the ability to identify some of the biggest risks in terms of these 10 applications, establish the boundaries of, of this particular kind of modernization or project, what's in, what's out, etc. And most importantly, we want to be able to establish a baseline so that we can actually show progress towards our modernization goals and the return on investment to, to the board as we kind of go down this path. The next step is to be able to do some as-is architecture. And for this, we use software intelligence to actually capture an x-ray or an MRI of the application where we can literally map out the components and the dependencies literally based on the software code and the calls between the software code. This gives us the ability to see the complexities before we begin so we can plan and budget and allocate resources appropriately and effectively. At the end of the day, this mitigates or avoids unexpected overruns due to unknown dependencies, et cetera. If I may, I'd like to draw to your attention, the, the view on the left is the components and the structured view. The view on the right is the actual paths through the code and the actual transactions that are going between the different levels. And it's hard to see it at, at this level, but suffice it to say that we have some Java and some some mobile level apps at the top level down through, in this particular case, mainframe COBOL and DB2. So with this capability, we can quite happily view the entire stack as we talked about a moment ago. The next is to be able to do some target state and 2B architecture design. And with this capability, we can actually define a technical 
layering or a technical architecture, if you will, and also a functional design or a functional architecture, and actually map that technical and functional architecture to the, to the, the as-is architecture, and it will actually then show us where do we have existing transactions or calls or components that are not compliant with that technical architecture. This validates the, 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 the to be design against architectural rules. It helps us identify gaps and violations in the existing system. And now we can actually generate an action plan from the, those violations that have been discovered. And, and in fact, it will guide the development work. Now in, in the next kind of phase or conversation, we're gonna specifically talk about guiding the development work. So we're looking at a dashboard that shows the, the typically the project manager or the, the project director, the, the, the applications and components that have been worked on, maybe those transactions or components that have the most risks or the, the, the biggest weaknesses, maybe the, the highest priorities. And we can actually use this to identify the specific violations and risks, again, at the component level, at the transaction level. We can use this dashboard, if you will, to prioritize work and track progress. We actually use this dashboard to facilitate work by drilling straight into the, the code that contains these issues. And, and we use these, this dashboard to seamlessly report progress to management. And more specifically, we can now track progress over time. So we can build in project level KPIs, whether that's the number of defects that we're resolving or addressing, the number of violations. Um, maybe we're tracking the number of functions that we're actually building in. So in addition to modernizing and improving the architecture and securing the application, we're building additional functionality and we want to track that as well. So we, we have this dashboard to see current levels at a glance, to know kind of where we are right now, but we can also manage and view trends and watch progress over time and, and in fact report and project ROI based on factual data. So at the end of the day, the, the modernization lifecycle with software intelligence provides these benefits. First and foremost, we can save time and align with the business when it comes time to assess the portfolio. When it comes time to do the as-is architecture, we can tame the complexity that these applications inherently have. We have the ability to digest legacy code, we can understand modern technology and get that visual map. When designing to target state architecture, we can A, avoid violations and help our delivery teams avoid violations or identify those violations. We can promote quality and compliance throughout and at the end of the day, deliver secure, reliable software. And the dashboards that we looked at, they guide development, they help manage priorities, and then the pro program managers and directors can track progress, and, it, and frankly, it helps justify the investments. So how does CAS provide software intelligence? First and foremost, we have the ability to scan across your applications and give you that bird's eye view of the portfolio to quickly identify candidates for modernization, again, based on business impact, business value, or maybe some technical drivers, technical in in insufficiency or technical debt, et cetera. And once we've identified those applications that we want to target for modernization or consolidation, we can do a deep dive ingestion of all the source code and the database structure and provide that those architecture blueprints that give you first the as-is architecture, so you see before you start digging in what it is that you're working with, and gives you the ability to lay out the target architecture and compare one, and one to the other to specifically identify those things that need to be changed. By clearly identi identifying those violations and those defects, we can provide code level remediation action plans and actually enable your delivery teams to drill sp straight into those places in the code that actually need to be changed. And of course, management has provided a dashboard that helps them track progress and report ROI as, as they go. So with that said, I want to thank you all for spending a few minutes with me here through this recorded video. I want to invite you to come to cassoftware.com. 
welcome you to request a demonstration. Thank you so much and have a good day.